Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Danny is greeted by Phyllis in the Jazz Lounge. She observes that he enjoys his time of year and is not shocked to see him again. Danny says, that's nice. Phyllis observes that she received a mere two words from him. Danny stutters, you realize. The bug comes back into town and all of a sudden I'm the pariah. Phyllis asks. Danny maintains that nothing has changed and expresses his continued admiration for her efforts to better her life. You're just admiring me from arm's length, right? Phyllis asks with a smile. Danny gets the impression that she is putting whatever she is holding onto about Christine onto him. Phyllis expresses regret. When it comes to the bug, she becomes defensive. Should Phyllis call her Christine, Danny asks. She recently went through a breakup and is going through a difficult moment. So just please, let her alone. Phyllis promises to fire Christine and says she's not about that. She is sympathetic to what she is going through. Danny observes that Phyllis is making an attempt, but he worries that they are reverting to their previous dynamic. Phyllis enjoys hearing it. I'm sorry for Christine. Really, I do. My worst adversary shouldn't experience that type of suffering. Is she merely repeating what she thinks Danny wants to hear, while Danny teases her? He is reassured by Phyllis that she has changed. I'm not finished yet. Danny asks himself, aren't we all? Phyllis anticipates that she will start meditating. Danny has been doing it for years, and it has been really beneficial to him. How about Phyllis? Will you teach me? Danny chuckles to himself. He isn't certified, so he can't instruct her. Phyllis acknowledges that the idea is unfamiliar to her. Danny says she can learn to control her impulses from a licensed trainer. He grants Phyllis's request to hook her up. Danny but says he has plans the invitation. For oh, let me guess is her response. Danny says that Christine isn't it. Christine and Nina talk about staying together at society while Chance wraps up his research. The opportunity to spend time together the other day made them pleased. Christine felt relieved she could discuss her love for Danny honestly, without fear of being looked down upon. Nina claims that she was deeply in love with him, and that nothing unusual occurred throughout her marriage to Paul. When Chelsea and Chloe get together at Crimson Lights, Chelsea finds it admirable that Summer wants to have a conversation away from work. Chloe makes fun of being called upon by the boss. Chelsea is aware of their recent arguments, but she doesn't care because she believes their meeting will go well. Summer enters and summarizes Chloe's complaints about the creative process. Chelsea considers it typical. Summer is sure they can find the ideal equilibrium. To their surprise, Chloe blurts out, Yeah, that just doesn't seem feasible to me. Summer expresses to Chloe her desire to find a solution that benefits them all. Chloe is only expressing her honest opinion, saying, This can't work. Chloe claims there's no need, but Chelsea wants to spend some time alone with her. With three of them involved and Summer being so hands-on, she doesn't think they can find a rhythm. It's a constant struggle to be heard. Chloe believes Summer can work with Chelsea to strike a balance. It's not where she wants to be right now, and she will be the odd one out. When Nate gets fired from Newman Enterprises, he gops. Victoria asks, for what? In response, you had it all planned, Nate, didn't you? Asks Victor, to keep me away from here, send me off to some loony bin with physicians who don't give a damn about my health. Nate objects. I have all the proof right here, yells Victor while brandishing his phone. I spoke with the head of that lunatic asylum, and he provided me with an extensive report. Nate maintains that by making plans ahead of time, he was safeguarding his privacy. Precautions and NDAs were required. You are lying now, and you were lying then, yells Victor. Victoria begs her dad to stop being so crazy. When Victor feels like it, he will relax. He claims that everyone should be aware that this entire mental degeneration was a hoax. He was well aware of who controlled Newman Media. I didn't forget anything at all. You didn't forget that your granddaughter was dead. Adam queries. I asked you point blank if this was a setup, Nick continues. 
I had to find out who would possibly betray me, yells Victor. And while I was leaning toward you, Adam, I was relieved to learn that you were not the true offender. Even me, exclaims Victoria. You didn't even have faith in me. Victor Inquiring said he was skeptical of what? Each of them. Victoria, when Victor sat on this chair and threatened to demote her, he witnessed her reaction. Power corrupts. Thus, he always had a suspicion that she had been seated in that chair for too long. He claims that she is still more angry about her situation than about what her partner did. Nate crinkles his lips. Victoria contends that Nate merely wanted to be of assistance. Victor took the necessary action, and the result validates his decision. Victoria is furious because she would never treat him or any other member of this family that way. Well, maybe one person if we're being honest. Adam muses to himself. Victoria is extremely offended that her father believes she would use him in that manner. Because of all the internal strife and because of Nate, Victor anticipated it. He was aware that someone was preparing to take control. Victoria queries how long he intended to keep this a secret from them all. Nikki apologizes, she was aware of Victor's actual motivations, but she would have brought Nate directly to task if she had told Victoria. And then we'd never have known of Nate's true intentions, declares Victor. According to Nate, he was behaving in his best interests. Victor yells that he intended to throw him in the loony bin so that he and Victoria could reclaim the authority that he had usurped from her. Nate contends he was providing the greatest care possible, Nikki orders him to cease. Nate makes fun of their plan to convert Newman Enterprises into a temporary medical facility. Adam claims that there would have been less chance of exposure or leaks, protecting their father. Nate makes fun of them for their love of operating in secrecy and creating their own regulations. Nothing I did was incorrect. My proposal was reasonable and compliant. And you know what? I didn't have any hidden agendas. Recognizing that he cannot persuade them otherwise, Nate rushes away after telling Victor that firing him was a favor. Victoria follows Victor after saying, We'll talk about this later. Victoria runs into Nate by the elevators and offers an apology. She is accused of betraying him by Nate, saying, I thought we were a team. We are, protests Victoria. It certainly didn't feel that way in there, Nate hisses. Victoria shares his rage over everything. Not even close, Nate responds. He's confident she'll move past it and be all right. Victoria detests how things have come to pass. Nate yells, you sided with Adam. You basically threw me to the wolves. If it doesn't tell me all I need to know about your priorities, then my god Victoria murmurs. Nate. Adam's scheme, Nate rages, was the ideal pretext for him to control Victor from the inside out. It appears that you were not paying attention if you failed to notice that. Nick tells his father at the office that he didn't actually put them all through this merely to get rid of Nate. Victor had to devise a test to determine that it was Nate because he was unaware of it. You expected me to fail spectacularly, smirks Adam. You assumed that I would be the one to use my position of power to my advantage. All of you did. With good reason, Nicky sniffs. Adam claims that it genuinely bothered him because he thought Victor was declining. Nick remarks that he is certain he would have taken advantage of this to Nikki's derision. Victor claims to be certain that Adam behaved in both his and the business's best Victoria interests. Victoria informs Nate beside the elevator that it was her father, not her, who had done this to him. Given that it's in her DNA, Nate doesn't entirely hold her accountable. You did not stray from the path, did you? Victoria says that this can be fixed. According to Nate, she would have to take a stance that she doesn't want to. He is enraged because Victor believes he has evidence of a coup, even though the details were quite plausible. I made the mistake of assuming you would support me. He won't be able to return. Victor remarks in the workplace that when things are going well, it would be one thing for the siblings to quarrel like this. God forbid there had been a crisis— this would have been catastrophic, he says. He was reminded there was no crisis by Nick. Victor retorts, you're unaware of that. That is unknown to us. But Adam was aware of the stakes. He requested that you all cooperate. Well, we'll never know that, will we? 
because you ended the charade before Nate could be put to the test, quips Nick in a caustic manner. When Victoria rejoins them, she is upset that Victor didn't offer Nate a second chance. Why was it necessary for you to fire him so soon? Victor restates that Nate told him to get out of the way by calling the loony bin. He wanted to give you home court advantage again, nods Nick. It was about getting you back in charge so that he could then be co-CEO rather than any real concern for your father, Nikki says to her daughter. Victor believes Nate did it as payback for him demoting her. Victoria tells her father it was mean to act like there was a problem with him. Victor retorts that her mother was correct when she told him not to take the chance of telling Nate the truth. Victoria screams, Dad, you know what? Though your instincts are sounding off, your mind might not be. They have no value in Adam's eyes. She believes that despite all of the horrible things he has done, this entire game has just been another opportunity to give him a pass. I apologize, but I'm not sure if I can accept your forgiveness for this. Nikki gives Victor the hairy eyeball as she leaves, saying, I told you this would happen. After their previous conversation, Christine tells Nina at Society that she spotted Danny at the club. When Nina discovers Phyllis was present, she makes an educated guess. When Chris entered, Danny pretended that she didn't even exist. She queries what transpired. Christine talks about how they sat at the piano together and feels it was sweet. Nina believes it sounds magical. Chris claims that being with him was quite simple. Nina continues talking about how they still click. Being a wonderful listener, Christine found herself opening up to him. If she will pursue this, Nina queries. They're pals, Christine says, and she still has a lot to work through. I'm not going to rush into anything. Summer leaves to answer a call at Crimson Lights, and Chelsea confronts Chloe about her departure. Chloe believes it to be logical. They're a team, Chelsea tells her. Chloe informs her that Summer is a fantastic facilitator and that she is a maker. Although Summer isn't letting them pursue their own interests, she doesn't mind at all. It's just not my style. Chelsea claims that she cannot do this without her and that she needs her. She has the chance to go creative and make something, Chloe informs her. I don't require this. When Summer returns, she asks Chloe what she needs to do to convince her to stay. Chloe claims she is unable to alter her thoughts. I simply don't feel like I fit in there. She felt that she blended in well with Sally previously. They have a rhythm that helped her understand what a partnership ought to feel like. It wouldn't be just for her to stay for both of them. Even though I love you both, Danny I think it's time why for me Phyllis to is on. fixated on the notion that he and Christine are having an affair while they are in the jazz lounge. Daniel and Lucy are having supper with him. The return of Lucy and Heather to the area thrills Phyllis. She will push her kid away, Danny warns her, if she tries to force Heather and Daniel back together. Phyllis gives him comfort. In that case, you are welcome to join us, Danny says to her. Christine gripes to Nina at society about Phyllis leaving her misdeeds unpunished. She no longer has what it takes to be a DA her phone rings, while Nina is giving her more job suggestions. After listening, she confirms that she is his mother. How awful is it? Chance has been shot, she informs Christine, after telling the person on the other end that she will be right there. Chris leaves the house with her companion in tow. Adam says, Just to be clear, Dad, you really are all there, in Victor's office. I'm as lucid and as sharp as I've ever been, boy, Victor chuckles. Nikki is able to confirm that. Adam queries their next course of action. Victor's curious about Nick's current situation. He claims that his sister has grown what he developed throughout her entire life. He says, I hate seeing her go through this, which makes sense given how wounded she is. Victor feels that she knows that what he's saying about Nate is true, but he does too. She had to have witnessed and experienced his increasing desire for power. Nick is relieved that Nate is no longer with him, but he's more shocked that Adam avoided falling into his trap. I told you we needed to pull together for Dad, but you wouldn't set aside your personal feelings, a furious Adam says. Nick is informed by Victor that he needs Nate at the company now that he is gone. In her mind, this may be one betrayal too many. 
Nick says, implying that Victoria might not be able to forgive him. Victoria messages Nate in the corridor, pleading with him to return her call so they may meet and converse. Nate reads Victoria's text at society and slams his phone against the bar. Picking it back up, he replies, tell me when and where, to Devon's previous text offering to get a drink together. Close honesty is much appreciated by Summer at Crimson Lights. So, you're really walking away? Chelsea queries. Chloe answers, I believe I am. As soon as they hear Sharon on the phone telling Esther, I really need to get to the hospital, they immediately stop talking. Summer queries the issue. Chance has been shot, says Sharon. When Chris inquires about Chance's chest wound, Nina vanishes behind a curtain as she and Christine arrive at the hospital. The nurse claims that the amount of the harm has not yet been confirmed. When Nana walks into Chance's room and sees him lying there, she sobs. It's me, Chance. It's your mother. Chance stays silent as she sobs. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.